Okay. So I opened up the cabinets here. I just want, Ricky suggested we look at some of these records we have on display. Now these are a small, small uh, selection. So we, you know, once we're across the street, we'll have a much larger look at like some of Lewis's record collections. But here, let's take a look. Lee Wiley, whoa, Joe Bushkin. Bobby Hackett, wow. Right? <laughs> that surprises me. All right, Al Jolson. Okay, on DECA, I can see that. Good. Stan Rubin. Mm -hmm. Ed Pulser played with Stan Rubin. <laughs> I didn't know that, really? Yeah. And it's, and it's signed <laughs> to my good friends, Lewis and Mrs. Armstrong, Stan Rubin. Wow. Who else? Baby dogs talking drums. Did this come out while Lewis was alive? Yeah, he dubbed it to, to, to tape. Okay. Yeah, I have this. I, I have this on CD. This is this is amazing. Actually, everybody should listen to this. This is amazing. Uh, Rampart Ramblers, <laughs> Sydney to Paris, Fred. Wow. Atlantic. I remember in Atlantic they were putting out that series. They all came out on LPs much later. Okay, Sashmo Serenades. Mm -hmm. I have that. Okay, Charlie Christian. This is amazing. <laughs> okay. On Vox. Wow. Yeah, these are the uh, these are the Mitten sessions. Yep. Uh huh. Nick Fenton, Ken Clark. <laughs> Ken Clark, who played with Lewis. Yep. Around this time. Yeah, exactly. And Thelonious Monk. That's incredible. I heard that the uh, Minton still has Charlie Christian's amp. The original amp is wow. still up there. Wow. Holy smokes. Marion Anderson. Now, let me tell you, man, like everybody had these records, the Marion Anderson. Mm -hmm. everybody, everybody had this record. That's, that's, that was in everybody's, that was it. Now, Bessie Smith, yeah. this is signed. Thanks, Lewis. Happy birthday, Jimmy. Who is this? Oh, I'm, I'm not even sure. Jimmy Raspin, Jimmy. I don't know who signed this. Huh. It's with our fellows about the effect that Lewis's earlier side mandates with these like incredibly, uh, these important women, Bessie Smith being probably the prime example in Ma Rainey, mm -hmm. how that had such an effect on him as a musician later on in life. Like what he actually, he actually apprenticed under Bessie Smith and Ma Rainey. That's the way I look at it. Yep, yep. And I, I'm sure that had just as much of an effect on him as it did working with uh, King Oliver. Sure. You know, I mean, the, the record industry is based off of her, for God's sake, you know? Yep. This, I can't see what this, this looks like a DECA. This is just an empty sleeve case. Mm. Uh, Lewis. Oh, yeah. Paris, 1934. Also on Vox, yep. Yep. I love the way they put those collections together back then. That's That's really important. Lewis New Orleans New Classic. So this record, it looks like Lewis taped. Yeah. It says recorded. So he he transferred this. Correct. Yep. That, that's his and method. That was his method. He would write recorded. So, and that's his actual handwriting there, or is that a? Oh yeah, that, that's his. That's that's actually it. Oh man, that's pretty amazing. Wow. It's crazy because when you think about it, like getting records today is so easy, you know? Yep. Uh, Big Spider Beck. I mean, Bix didn't have a lot of records, man. Right. Okay. So it's Bix. I mean, I mean the, the connection between Lewis and Bix is a pretty profound one in considering the kind of influence that uh, Bix still exerts today. I think uh, it's, again, another one of these, like, hidden lineages that 
people don't really understand. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Bix is in many ways kind of a template for like the white jazz musician or something like that, you know, like, in, and it's, it goes directly through Lewis, like 100%. Right. And, and Bix, he died not far from here. He died in uh Sunnyside. In a, in a sunny, sunny side. Yep. Sunny side. Okay. Satchmo. Now this, we have pictures of this collection. I think Lewis is looking at this in, yep. in uh, the living room. Is in the living correct? room. Yeah, they're, they're looking through the book with Lewis room. and Lucille. Right. Yeah. That's it. Right. And then up here, let's continue. Oh, the, crescendo, the crescendo. It was at the crescendo. I don't know this one. Oh, that's great. Yeah, 1955. Oh, this is a Gene Norman production. Lose at the crescendo. All right. Is there anything on here? Nothing written. It says Jack Bradley on the back. Oh, okay. There's a Jack Bradley. I mean, yeah, Lewis, Lewis owned a copy, but I guess we used, we probably have extras in Jack's collection. <laughs> okay. So we're, yeah, okay, so we're displaying Jack Bradley's copy. Yeah. And then here is one of my favorite records I have is W.C. Handy. Uh, man, I've, I have a couple of these, but I've never seen this pressing. Right, it's a rare cover. Yeah, I've never seen that pressing. And, okay, this is, what's so strong in the Playboy All-Stars? Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> Who's on this? I think that I forget which track they used. They used one of his pre-recorded tracks, but it was anybody who okay. won who anybody who won the Playboy poll. So it's a who's who. I see. Okay. Believe it or not, I, I always thought the Playboy polls were hipper than the downbeat ones. Yeah. <laughs> I think they were hipper. I think downbeat always was kind of shady in my I don't know. All righty. Uh country and western. <laughs> Man, now for me, this is one of the stranger records. It is. It totally is. <laughs> this is one of the stranger ones, man. You know. But uh, Ken Burns did a uh, he did a country music thing not long ago. Yeah. And Lewis was he was he was in there quite often. His name was. I mean, he Lewis was very important in the sure. the recorded phase of country music. It's pretty amazing. Rhapsody in Blue. Uh, Oscar Levant, yeah. Mm -hmm. Recorded. That's cool. And then the last thing is a Brunswick. It feels like a Brunswick, right? Here, Rachmaninoff. Symphony number two. So we have all of these on display. They're just kind of hidden, but we don't have the actual records in them. Yeah, they're, they're, they're kind of. They're at the archive. You can't do that. <laughs> right man this is amazing so these are just ch kind of chosen just for display purposes but but uh it shows you that he listened to everything but i figured the charlie christian would be the benny goodman stuff no it's all all the minton stuff we have we have him on tape introducing it it's great while we are playing a few V discs, there's a young man that played quite a few of those discs also, but he happened to have his band on these records, and they were made at Minton's. Uh, they made with uh, Minton's house, house band. Yeah. Uh, on this record is Joe Guy, trumpet, and uh, Theon Thelonious Monk, piano, Nick Fenton, bass, and uh, Kenny Clark drums and uh, it was recorded on lo location by De Jerry Newman and it's uh, Charlie Christian outfit Charlie Christian's on guitar and the title of the number is Charlie's Choice from one to three parts so we have a long listen on this one and I, I think it's a good idea So now, 
if you came to the museum, you probably watched our video right here. The camera is just right there, uh, our television monitor. And to the right, there's a door that's always shut. Uh, we opened it to the public at one point for like a special program, uh, like Lost Items of New York. But this was the downstairs bathroom for the Armstrongs. This was in the basement. Uh, and we kind of close it to the public. But I just want everybody to just take a quick look that, of, of their bathroom. Uh, wallpaper, of course. Uh, this bathroom needs a lot of work. That's one of the reasons why we keep it off. And, uh, and it just, just to give you an idea, I don't know if you've seen that picture of, there's a bathroom with like a plexiglass, it's a, a toilet with a plexiglass filled with coins, seat. But that was in this room right here, which is dark. The ventilation doesn't work and the electricity is off right now. But just so you get an idea that this was Armstrong's bathroom, like that. Okay, everybody, this is, we're sitting, here's a perspective you haven't seen. And we're on, on top of the, the garage roof. And uh, don't ask me how I got here, but I almost broke my neck getting up here. <laughs> but uh, I just want everybody to get a view of the garden from this perspective. So we're kind of up here. You can see. And then as I come around, here. So now when you walk into the museum, you walk into what was Lewis's garden, I mean to his, his garage. And uh, we've converted that into our gift shop. And, but today, we use, we use the gift shop, we use that as a place to greet people. But here's just a view of the garden, just so you get an idea of what it looks like from this perspective. So here we are in the garden, we're sitting at the picnic tables here and it's kind of camouflaged behind the shrubbery and up on that ledge there but there is a dog runner back there. I'm gonna say it's a good 30 feet of uh, an area for the Armstrong's dogs to play, to play in. Now this was for Trumpet and Trinket, and uh, this would not have been here for General, correct? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. General was the Schnauzer. No, he was, General was a- Boston a bull, Terrier. A, bull, a Boston Terrier. Uh, and uh, that was early. That was like in the 40s, right? Yeah, General died in 52, I believe. 52, yeah. Selma hated General because it, <laughs> it, it, uh, it threw up on her coat, her mink coat. <laughs> so that's, that's what I know about General. But uh, let's take a quick look at the runner. Now, again, like it's usually kind of camouflaged, but let's, we're going to take, take a quick look. You know, you know what General's nickname was? Oh no! What? Steak face. That's <laughs> that's where the song comes from. Sid's feature. Really? Yep. So oh, here man. is the dog runner. And this was the area that. Trumpet and Trinket used to frolic in, in this area right here. Like I said, in general, this is kind of camouflage for most people, but now you get an idea. And cut, we're done. Nice.